Hello everyone! Welcome back to some more Quest for Glory 4! Where we left off, we had returned... Well, we brought the staff back to the fairies, Irana's staff, after it had resurrected, basically, Tanya, or turned her from a vampire into a normal little girl. The fairies, however, wanted it for their own purposes and tried to take it from us. When the staff refused to yield, well, <laughs> we had to defend ourselves from them as they sought to kill Galvin. Galvin, though, survived, thank goodness. We also earned a spell that the staff won't get us, resistance, which helped us there. And now we find ourselves, uh, well, ready to beat the game. We slept, a, spent a night here after spending a night in the garden. And in the garden, we had a nightmare where the old one, the dark one, is attempting to reach out to us and tell us how to free it. In addition to that, we uh, spent a night here and we found a note from Katrina that she wants to talk to us. Probably not going to end very well for us because, uh, well, we took her daughter. Or the daughter she wanted, I suppose I should say. Actually, it was Belly and Belly? Bella and Yuri's daughter. Anyway, we're, we're set to go. So Gavin's going to get his, what he probably believes to be his final breakfast. Let's go ahead and do so. <laughs> Nothing like uh, your final meal, right? Yeah, so this is uh, an interesting day. Interesting day. We're not going to practice any spells. In fact, we can probably just accelerate time to make it nighttime as well. Uh, hello, Yuri. Good morning. You get a wide smile of greetings. All right, let's go ahead and get us a delicious spread. I hope it's sausage and peppers. God, it's so delicious. It's a garlic souffle, Mordavian style. You no, know, I never looked up what a souffle was. <laughs> I just, I remember, uh, was it Fraggle Rock? I think was the, 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 the puppet show way back when. And the gourds, the giant og the ogres, they were, I remember one episode where they were making a souffle. Thank you guys. You get a wave and a smile in response. It seems to be something that's baked or cooked. Darn it, Tim, that's all types of food. Of course it'll be cooked in the kitchen. You don't know what you're talking about. Shut up. Let's go ahead and shut up Tim, I meant. Not you, not you, viewer. You can yell me all you want for being dumb. Let's, uh... Good day again. Good day, Dimitri. Good morning to you. We'll go ahead and say hello. Good to see you. Good to see you too, sir. Take care. And Dimitri, if I don't come back, well, have Igor carve a gravestone for me in that graveyard. Though I, there might not be a body for it. Yep, take care, Dimitri. Take care. All right, let's go ahead and just head outside and pass by some time. This is the only thing that we can do at the moment. We don't have any other leads as to how to beat the game. This one's not quite like the other ones in which it's hinted as to what you have to do. Like in Quest for Glory 1, it's hinted that you have to save, uh, you have to defeat the brigands and save the prince. And if you get the full counter curse, drive Baba Yaga away from the land. The second one kind of just transpires. You have time which elapses, and things happen during that time. This one's somewhat similar to that, but it's more open-ended, and you can miss how to properly end the game for quite some time if you don't spend the final evening at the, um, the place, you know, the place, the inn. You cast the protection spell. How about the third one? I guess with the third one, it hints strongly as to what you have to do, because with the capturing of Jahari... Then when you release her, she, assuming that you befriended her, then she tells you kind of what to do, and then you free, you get the spear or the drum from them. You get the spear, return it to the drum, return it to the drum, return it to some body to get the spear, return it to them, and then the end sequence happens, which happens automatically. Yeah, okay. Let's, uh, let's, I guess we're just going to go this way. I remember kind of what happens as well, so we should rest probably down here, and then we'll make our way up to the gate. Yeah, and that's it. Let's just pass by some time. Can't think of a whole lot. After some rest, you feel better. To do. I mean, we could adventure around and fight a few more battles, but it's really pointless. We can't spend any of the money, and our stats are not really going to improve that much more. After some rest, you feel better. So we'll just pass by a few hours. We can just do this on screen. After oh, can't do that, though. 
And once it's sunset, we'll head on up to the gates. We will totally cast all our spells, though, first. After. After. Okay, let's keep get our spells going. You cast the protection spell. You cast the reversal spell. No reason why we shouldn't be prepared. You cast the aura spell. I'm not going to bother with resistance. It'll fade practically immediately. Like maybe last for 15 seconds, 20 seconds. Okay. Well, Galvin's been s sort of swell. You're so... F the only thing we've got going for us is that Katrina is in love with us. And we're going to pretend Galvin likes her back, so... I'd like to know a little bit more about her, but he's suspicious... Because she is, after all, a vampire trying to get him to do something. But she, she didn't actually try to get us to do anything. She changed her mind, apparently. Oh, wow. How nice of you to come. I'm afraid I accidentally signed the wrong name to your note. It's been ages since we last met. Come here and let me look at you. First off, we know that's a mistake. Um, Adivis has his eyes can hypnotize people, which he did to us back in Quest for Glory 2. So we know better than to actually lock gazes with him. Casting spells at him is a mistake. I, do, I think you're, you're insta-killed if you try to do so. And to tell you the truth, I'd rather react to what he's going to do than immediately attack him. Although, this is one of those few times I remember in the past I've talked about how I want to be able to do something to the enemy rather than let them monologue or capture us. But I think at this time it's best for us to talk to... talk to him. How out of this is still alive? I can tell he's a vampire. And judging from all the information that we have, we know it's Katrina who he's serving. We'll never get his intentions just by asking him. We could ask about the Dark Master, but we believe I know that's Katrina. Well, we know that's Katrina as well. We can get the specifics from him, though. How are you still alive, Adivis? We saw you plummet to your death. Now nah, this is dumb because we we know we know we know all of this. We know all of these. I, we know why Katrina's not here. Adivis. Well, I'm not going to apologize for killing. He's going to kill everybody. <laughs> say hello. Hey, Adivis. How you doing? You smile and say hello to Adivis. I hate cheerful people. I eliminated them in Rasir, and I shall do the same here. Why not? Out of this, take a fire to the face. <laughs> you have no power against one such as I. Let's play a little game of fox and hound, shall we? I have summoned the hounds of death. Now we shall see whether you've kept up with your running lessons. All right, we gotta run. Or we're doomed. This way, this way, go, go, go. Oh, that thing's fast. Oh, I think, I think, I think they got us. <laughs> you fool! Did you really believe you could get away from me? Yes, I did. I have you now, and you will pay for my death. It is you that caused me to become a vampire. If you had not killed me, I would never be forced to serve the Dark Master again. You probably blame me for all the problems around here, don't you? You understand nothing. The Dark Master is the cause of all the world that is here. The Dark Master brought you here against my better judgment. The Dark Master made me what I am now, a Nosferatu, and seeks to do the same to you. But I shall spare you that fate. I will mercifully end your miserable existence. Then the Dark Master and I will call forth eternal darkness, and we will no longer be limited to travel at night. Together, my master and I will create an army of undead, and we will conquer the world! Pity you won't be there to witness this. 
You cannot stop us now. You will never find your way out of this dungeon, and only a stake through the heart or more magic than you will ever have can stop us. You will die, knowing that you were destroyed by the Dark Master. Ah, the sun now rises and I must go to my rest. You too shall rest. I will not allow you the chance to escape your fate, or to use that stake and hammer I torment you with here. <laughs> Weapons of my destruction so close at hand, and yet so far. Sleep now, great hero. Tomorrow, you die. You find yourself falling asleep. Really? <laughs> uh, the humor to the end, I suppose. You wake up from what you thought was a nightmare, only to discover that it's only too real. Okay. It's not clear whether the cages are designed to hold prisoners or hungry monsters. Maybe both are put in at the same time. Oh, that's awesome. What time is it? Not quite nightfall. We woke up, however. Are we, are we not chained or anything like that? He just left us in this chamber, right? Well, let's grab the... You don't have the strength to break the chains. Oh, then we'll just cast an open spell. You open the lock on the chains easily. It seems your foe has underestimated you once again. It does seem odd, though, that he didn't bother to remove your backpack. Huh. That also means that he didn't take any of the Dark One's so ritual signs either, did he? No, he didn't. Glad he didn't search us. You're so f We're also still full. All right, perfect. Let's... Well, let's take these. Maybe we can find out of this down here. You take the wooden stake and stake its claim in your pack. You pick up the heavy hammer and store it in your pack. Is there any magic in this area? You sense no magic in this area. Okay. The heavily barred and reinforced door leads out to one of the castle's stairways. Well, let's take a peek and see if we can just get out of here. You hear the sound of voices on the other side of the door. It's barred on the other side, but you can see and hear the two guards to the peephole in the door. What's going on in there? The master didn't say nothing about guarding no prisoner. It's the Adabees guy's orders. So what? It gave us something to do. I don't like it. I think the Adabees guy is trying to pull a fast one on the master. He's not going to like this. You want to go down there and tell her? No way. Then shut up. Alright, well, we know where we are now. All things considered for the castle. And the master didn't look like she wanted us captured. Your protection spell has worn off. You cast the protection spell. Your aura has evaporated. You cast the aura spell. Okay, so... There must be some way out of here, then. The Executioner's Axe is neatly stored in the chopping block, waiting to get ahead. <laughs> Can we take it? It wouldn't make a good fighting axe. It's just balanced for executions. Oh, that makes sense, I suppose. We have to do with Iron Maiden. It's an Iron Maiden, a popular torture and murder device. The inside bristles with sharp iron spikes. Unlike most things here, it is shiny and has no rust forming upon it. Up, oh, suspicious. Suspicious. There's no reason to do that. The Iron Maiden isn't locked. Yeah, but we should still be able to open it with our open spell. Now that you look closely, there does seem to be something a bit odd about the design of the Iron Maiden. You take a deep breath and step inside. Oh, torches. You're going to ruin this entire place, aren't you? Your reversal spell has worn off. Ah, Katrina's bedchamber. You're in a lady's richly decorated bedroom. The coffin where there should be a bed seems a bit out of place. But there's no accounting for tastes. Yeah, shows he's a bit eccentric. That's fine. 
Let's cast Detect Magic. You sense no magic in this area. We'll immediately cast Reversal. You cast the Reversal spell. Save the game. And show you what not to do. So... The guards have alluded to the fact that the Dark Master didn't really want, um, didn't really approve of, I suppose, doesn't know that we're here, or that there's any prisoner, right? Adebees did it. Adebees left us unchained and not killed, which was interesting, so he's not allowed to actually harm us. He put us asleep, but we woke up just with enough time to do something. He also put the axe and stake, a hammer and stake, right next to us. Very convenient, wouldn't you think? Only shards remain of the mirror. It appears to have been shattered by a single violent blow. Where a bed would normally be is a closed coffin. It is an ornate affair, apparently custom designed for someone who expected to be in and out of it frequently. Well, she needs her sleep. Let's open it up, shall we? There's Katrina. Oh! Uh-oh. I think she's waking up. Uh, I wanted to actually show you guys what would happen if we actually did something else here. So, we're going to restore the game. We're going to walk up here, and we will use the stake and hammer. It is, however, a trap. We're not supposed to do this, but we'll just do this to get this on screen. Taking a deep breath, you place the stake over the vampire's black heart and pound it in with three mighty blows of the hammer. You stared at the lifeless corpse in the coffin. You never thought that killing a vampire would be anywhere near this easy. At last! I am free of her dominion over me. You did precisely what I wanted you to do. Destroy Katrina. So nice of you to cooperate with me. And you can't do anything to defend yourself here. He just insta-gives you. Which is also because we have the reversal spell in effect. <laughs> you really helped out of this this time. By getting rid of Katrina, you only turned him loose. Yep. So, not a thing you want to do. Okay, so with that out of the way, because I, I think Galvin's smart enough to know he's being set up. Uh, although now that we know we're set up after hearing the guards, I'd like to drop uh, the stake and hammer. I do not want it on Galvin, but it's too late. We picked them up, so we gotta, we gotta keep them. Let's go ahead and open up her coffin anyway. And there's several things we can do with Katrina. Like, we can just look at her and she'll wake up normally. Same thing if we talk to her. Let's think here. One second. I think we could, I think if we click the hand on her, we can just wake her up normally? Let's see. Sorry for all the reasons. Kill Katrina, awaken Katrina, cop a feel, or kiss her. I, even though she loves us, I don't think she'd appreciate us being here kissing her or feeling her up. We're not here to kill her, so why not just wake her up? You lean over the coffin, and gently shake Katrina awake. Suddenly you find yourself totally unable to move. Of course. You! What are you... How dare you! Try to kill me, were you! How dare you! You break into my home, steal away my child, kill my servant, Toby! And then return to kill me? After I befriended you and helped you, some hero you are. I should leave you here to rot. I should let the rats gnaw your bones while you hang there. Give me one reason, one excuse why I should not leave you here to die. Alf, it's hot. So, um, defend your actions, tell about child, tell Katrina you love her. She's not going to want to hear it, so, okay, so let's look at this. So, plead for mercy. Well, she might like that for a few minutes before she kills us. Def that's, 
She's furious. And uh, what's the expression? Hell hath no fury like a woman scorned. Or in this case, who's, uh, who, whose child she believed is she who believes her child was stolen. She stole the child herself, but she still loved Tanya. Uh, defend her actions, that's not going to work. She doesn't really care for that uh, very much. Um, we're a hero, but that means... That doesn't necessarily mean hurting even vampires, I suppose. And, heck, we... Well, Galvin likes Katrina. Tell about child. We can tell her that Tanya's happy and what have you. I don't think Tanya will want to hear about that, nor the fact that Tanya wanted to go with us. Katrina's not going to care if we tell her that we love her. She is furious, and she's going to think we're tricking her. I think the easiest thing to do is tell about Adivis and tell him that this was all. Tell her this was all a trap. We could tell about the child too. I just don't remember what she says about this. Let's tell her. I mean, the game's just saved. If we die, change your mind. Let's tell her about Tanya then, and tell her about the fact that we took Tanya back to her real parents. Actually, she's she's going to defend her actions, saying that she loved her too, just as much and educated her and treated her with kindness and all sorts of other stuff like that. And judging from Tanya, she did. Though she still stole Tanya. Nah, I think your best option is to tell about out of this. You tell her about how Ad Avis brought you here and set you up. Ad Avis. Yes, that does sound like him. He cannot harm me directly. I am his vampire master, after all. Plotting against me and trying to use you are very much his style. But it was not Adavis who stole Tanya from me! You broke into my home and took my child away! Why should I show you any mercy? Oh, wow. <laughs> I don't remember another question like this. Alright, Katrina, that was not your child. You, She is not of your blood. Or she became of your blood when you made her that way. But you stole her from Bella and Yuri. Oh, God. Screaming back at her? Well, I'm... Say you're sorry. No, where I'm not. Explain your actions, Galvin. It's a... Uh, that's what I would do. You try to explain what you're doing in Katrina's bedroom. She didn't ask for that at all. Trying to find an exit from the dungeon? Just couldn't pass up a chance to look at the helpless vampire, could you? Funny place to look for an escape route, wasn't it? I have decided that I still have a use for you. Alive. If you help me... You may still manage to leave Mordavia without my mark upon you. I want you to seek out the five missing Dark One rituals and return to the castle. Together we will summon the Dark One and bring eternal night to this land. You will help me, won't you? Or must I take more drastic measures to assure your obedience? Okay, well, we can talk to her, too, as well. What do you mean drastic measures, Katrina? I can bite your throat and lick your blood until you are vacant. You will then be alive, but under my complete control. However, you would find it difficult to think clearly, and it would take you a long time to heal. You would be very vulnerable to attack from the monsters of the night. Since I do not want you to die just yet, I will restrain myself from caressing your very handsome throat with my teeth. For now, anyway. God, her voice, she's so, she's so hot. Let's ask about the Dark One a little bit, since she apparently is the one who knows something about it. We've been trying to find information enough to banish it. Maybe Galvin would be able to get some information out of her that will help us defeat it. The Dark One lies dreaming between this world and its own. The Dark One's cave not only is a temple to the Dark One, it is the Dark One. I need the rituals in order to bring the Dark One back into this world. Ah, interesting. 
Would the Eternal Night, you think, cover all of the world in darkness, or just this area? The Dark One will cast the shadow of darkness upon this land. Daylight will never come again. Then I will no longer need to sleep helpless in my coffin. I will no longer be vulnerable to any mere human who seeks to drive a stake through my heart. I truly will be the Dark Master. I guess we'll ask about Kachina's mark, but we already know that it's basically turning us into a vampire, and that when we die, we'll, we would serve her. But why not? Well, let's hear what she has to say about it. The telltale mark of a vampire's victim is the pair of puncture wounds on the throat. Oh, okay. So, well, we've only really got agree to help. We could stay here and she'll still whip us for a bit before I think she, uh, kills us. So, since, uh, we don't really want to die... We'll agree to help her. If nothing else, we this will get us closer to banishing the Dark One. Remember that dream that I think Bella had about... Or was it the Domovoy who told us about it? About a staff touching a crystal. Well, we have that staff, Irana's staff. We just need to find this crystal. Maybe it's inside the Dark One's cave in one of those behind one of those sphincters that we weren't able to open. We will agree to help. You tell Katrina that you'll do anything, anything at all, if she'll just let you go and not rip your throat out. <laughs> Very well. But because I can never completely trust you, I will make certain you carry out my bidding. By my will, I guess thee. Thou shalt seek the heart ritual of the Dark One. Thou shalt seek the blood ritual of the Dark One. Thou shalt seek the breath ritual of the Dark One. Thou shalt seek the bone ritual of the Dark One. Thou shalt seek the sense ritual of the Dark One. Return with these rituals ere three nights pass, lest ye suffer. Thus is your gear. So go and return with the ritual soon. I would not want you to suffer after all. <laughs> okay, well, we've got three days. We have all the rituals right now, though, and there's only five of them. Yeah, we got five. Okay, well... That's fine. We'll come back here tomorrow. I think the gate will be open, and we'll be able to bring the rituals back. You cast the protection spell. Well, we're out at night. We might as well. You cast the aura spell. Run back to the garden and spend another night there and see if we get a different nightmare. Maybe the Dark One will reach out to us and give us some hints as well. Though I'm pretty sure it's going to be quite happy with Katrina releasing it. She's powerful enough to do so. Her and Adivis. Oh, there's no... there's no music? Oh, oh crap! That's not the music I wanted to hear. Alright, I don't need to fight whatever it is. There is no reason to do it. Our stats and spells are as high as I really kind of am expecting them to be without a lot of farming. Farming? Without a lot of grinding. So we're going to run back to the garden, spend the night there, then run back to Katrina, give her the rituals that we've been acquiring. So if by this point in the game you hadn't collected any, you can go to the gypsies, and they will give you hints as to where you need to go to get all the rituals. I guess we might as well take another fruit. I don't think we'll consume an entire bar of mana for the end sequence, though. Ah, uh, poor Galvin. Poor Galvin. The last girl you... Last, last girl you had relationships with used you for sex. And, and then dumped you for someone else. Ah, that sucks. And... Oh. You are walking dark halls, and you are dying. You know you are trying to find something, but you cannot remember where or what it is. 
It's cold here, and all your warmth is draining away. You see light ahead of you, a faint ember of what it once was, but you know that this is what you seek. You reach for it but stumble, and the light goes out. The darkness awakens. You awaken as the sun begins to rise. You wake in a cold sweat. You remember every detail of the nightmare as though it had really happened to you. Okay, so maybe we that was Irana. You cast the protection spell. Trying to hint to us as to what we have to do, but the dark one was there, his uh its symbol. So somehow I think it was it that was communicating with us. We will not need another fruit. Believe it or not, I'm not gonna roll around and grab one. Well, let's just make our way over to Katrina. Yeah, so, the, and of course, this girl turns out to be um, someone who wants to uh, destroy this section. Well, she just want to destroy the world, Tim. She just wants it to be forever night so she's not ever vulnerable ever again. I wonder who made her a vampire. We'll, we'll never get any of her backstory beyond what we've seen so far, unfortunately. But I like that, like, if there were any notes or, I guess, games these days, you pick up all sorts of interesting tidbits as to what happened, who created her, what her thoughts were, and, like, journal entries or stuff like that. But, well, at the time, there was nothing like that, I think. I think this game came out at the same time that Daggerfall came out, right? 1993 or so? Daggerfall had a ton of books in it. Oh, well, those are also fan books. A lot of them. I'm oh, sorry, I'm beginning to babble. Let's uh, eat some fruit. Fruit. You're so. I'm not hungry. Why am I not hungry? Okay, well, whatever. That's fine with me. Yeah, I don't think Boris is even at the gate. I think it's completely open and unbarred for us. Perhaps Boris saw us walking up to the gate and just left. Dark Master told him, um, you know, leave it open for three days. If he sees us, yep. His approach. This way we also don't have to fight two Necrotars on the other side of the gate last night. Alright, let's save the game again. And let's head up to the castle. It's quite an amazing path to get there. What a good boy you are. You would never do anything to hurt me, would you? Unlike some others I could name. So, you have returned with the rituals. Good. Very good. We will journey at once to the Dark One's cave. Soon, it will be forever night and I shall never be at anyone's mercy again. Ya Avuzel, hear me, great Dark One. Open thy mouth that we may enter. Open thy mouth that will swallow us all. Open thy mouth of darkness, Ya Avuzel. That is all I can do for you, Galvin. You will need to perform the other rituals yourself. We will be watching you. So do not even think of trying to betray us. The last ritual remains with the High Priest. You will need to take it before you begin the other rituals. Please, be careful. Yes, we would hate for anything unpleasant to happen to you. Enter now, and good luck. Yeah, she's still, she's still in love with Galvin. She doesn't really want him hurt. Your protection spell has worn off. Which works out for us. Holy crap. God, it's such an awesome animation watching them both vanish. Wow, it's been a long time since I've been here, everybody. Let's move up a little bit. We'll take a look around. Cast some spells as well. There's no reason not to. You cast the protection spell. We're probably not going to fight any undead in this location. Let's cast a reversal. You cast the reversal spell. And look at this nastiness. The gruesome creature is a cross between a squid, chocolate pudding, and your worst nightmares. 
It looks awake, alert, and as if it would enjoy having you for supper. A large book lies on the ground beside it. As awful as it now appears, something about the creature's shape suggests that it was once as human as you. Something truly terrible must have occurred to change it to its current shape. Since it will be years until I play through the game again, if I do so, and even then, I'd have to play a paladin to find this information out. Uh, all the, I believe, everything in here, uh, I'm sorry, everything in here. He was a human. He was the last boyar, or Borgov, or remember the Borgov fighting in the last boyar, and those um, Chernovi wizards were also once people, members of the cult. They were all transformed during the final battle um, when Irana banished the Dark One. Okay, well, if you're a fighter, I think you can fight this creature. I've never, ever fought it, ever, because I've always been a mage when I've gotten this part this far into the game. I guess as the thief, you also have to fight it. But we're a mage, so we don't have to do anything of the sort. A gentle feeling of peace suffuses the cave. The horrible creature slowly relaxes and subsides into an uneasy sleep. We can then grab the book with fetch. Your spell travels down to the cave floor and draws up a large, well-worn book. It seems to be a nobleman's diary. You pick up the book and read it. It is the diary of the last boyar. It seems that the thing in the pit was the last boyar. Being a servant of the Dark One didn't do much for his looks or disposition. On the last page is the thing you have been searching for, the Ritual of Essence. Now you have all the rituals, and the summoning of the Dark One can begin. The book crumbles into dust in your hands moments after you memorize the final ritual. I guess we wrote it down, because we have a magical paper. Oh, we don't have it. Okay, so we did, in fact, remember it. We can't levitate across this rope bridge because the wind is going in the other direction. So we'll just have to, have to cross hand over hand. All right, goodbye, Borgov. Shame about him. The slightly pulsating sphincter, as nasty as that is to say, is where we need to go. Wow, haven't been here in quite some time, have we? Okay, so let's set the torch. You put the torch back in the sconce. That looks rather ominous, doesn't it? And this must be where the bone ritual is performed, judging from all the bones all over the place. By the way, are we hungry? There's nothing like a snack before. You're so f Okay, we're, we're good. All right, so let's find us the bone ritual and utter it to begin to bring life back to these bones. There are lines in the sand as if it has been used in the past to form pictures. There is no apparent pattern to the lines at the moment. Oh, do I have to put the Dark One sign on it first? You press the Dark One sign against the top of the altar. The sand swirls and shifts to form a mirror image of the sign. The Dark One sign dissolves into the sand, its purpose fulfilled at last. At least that cursed item is now gone. Now we can read the ritual. You unroll the scroll containing the bone ritual. The words are visible at last, and you begin to perform the ritual. Ya, Avuzel! Dark One, come! I stand among your massive bones. Let your skeleton once more be filled with your presence. The rocks of the cave creak and groan around you, as if forced to bear some massive weight. Ya, a voozle! Take shape once more in this place that is your home! 
stand again among us. The bones near the altar start to sway and move as if a massive wind was blowing change through the cavern. Ya Avuzel, Dark One, come. As you complete the ritual, the scroll turns to dust in your hands. Suddenly you realize that the nearest bones have formed into a cage and are closing around you. That should completely enclose you as well, very quickly. You are in a large cave. You are in- Okay, we can't look at them. So, a fighter can break out of this. I don't know what a thief does. We, however, we read about uh, a cage or a prison a long time ago that alternating frost and fire spells will weaken such a, such a prison. Your frostbite spell has frozen the bones, but they're still strong and solid. No problem. Then we can fire them. The bones momentarily glow red hot. Your spell has softened them a little. Again. The brittle bones are now covered with a layer of frost. That did it. The brittle bones cannot take any more of your own sort of spells. They crack and fall to the ground. Interesting that, now that I think about it, whenever we cast a spell, we don't tend to need... What am I looking to say? There's no, like, particular gesture, I guess. If we're trapped, we can still cast our open spell. We don't necessarily, I guess, need our hands free. Maybe it helps us direct it in some way? I don't know if we also need to bring the torch with us. Let's save this. And head on out, if we can. The valve won't budge. Where is our dagger? Your attacks have no... Your... The valve won't budge. Oh, we, need, we do need the torch. Okay, well then we'll walk back here and get it really quick. I wanted to leave it here. It seems pretty fitting. If this is the dark one, I guess its insides are on fire? You take the torch. Actually, it's a horrible, ancient, dark demon nightmarish creature from another dimension. There's no guarantee that its body works in any way that I would be familiar with anyway, so I guess being an altar in here would be Your fun. attacks have... Holy crap! You force the sphincter open with your dagger and pass through. One of the tests is done. Let's now get the other one. Well, another one, I suppose. Oh, it's been a while. Okay. This is the blood cave, I believe. In fact, a tech magic which should show it's infused with blood magic, I think. This entire cave is suffused with dark, eldritch magic. It seems to be entirely formed of water, or blood magic. The strongest enchantment surrounds the stone head on the right side. Okay, well, let's make our way over to that altar now. I think we... This is... We can just climb onto this. It's actually very close to this little spot, as opposed to being far in the distance. There we go. Now, let's see. Um, can we climb over this? You can't budge it. Actually, let's look around. We didn't even look around, Tim. You are in an eerie cave that appears to have been formed by red lava. It's a long way down to the pits between the narrow passageways. The rough stone altar is covered with dark stains as of blood long since dried to powder. Feel a creepy, uneasy sensation whenever you pass near it. A bowl set beneath the altar is partly filled with the still viscous blood of many past victims. You can see black stains on the sides of the bowl, grim relics of the dark priests with bad aim. Oh, God. Those poor people.
Thankfully, our agility is pretty high, I think. Is that correct? What's our, what is our agility? 333. So we don't have... I don't, think, I don't think it can fall off, but still. I like to think that, thanks to our, how high our agility is, we won't have any trouble here. All right, well, we're here. It's time to do another ritual. Is this the blood one? Blood ritual. Okay, so we're, we have them in the order which they probably have to be read. You unroll the scroll containing the blood ritual. The words are visible at last, and you begin to perform the ritual. Yeah, a woozle, bringer of blood. I bring fresh blood to fill your veins. Following the scroll's instructions, you prick your finger and let a few drops of blood drip into the altar bowl. They seem to sizzle and roil within the black bowl. Yeah, a woozle. Let this chamber fill with your fiery blood once more. Drops of thick acid liquid begin to form and drip from the altar into the bowl. Yah, a woozle, bringer of blood! The dark liquid oozes forth from openings throughout the chamber and begins to fill the channels below. The blood hisses and sizzles as it flows. The scroll falls from your hands into the altar bowl, where it is instantly consumed by the acid. A thick, putrescent liquid now oozes and flows through the cave. It looks highly corrosive and in general like something you'd best avoid. That is awesome looking. That is incredible. I love that. Okay, so... We need... To, oh, the water is right in front of us there, I think. I think we'll... I think if we walk in front of it there, we'll end up getting burned to death. Even though it looks like it's falling into the center of the pool, that maybe it is. I think it might be spraying on top of it. Like, if I click over here... Oh, we can't. I think if I... It's really hard that the depth, my depth perception in this area is a bit odd. Can we walk over this way? No, we can't. All right, so we're forced to go, forced to go this way. Oops, sorry about the sniffing. Come on, Galvin. Let's do this. Yep. As you pass under the hot shower of acid blood, you finally realize just how wicked the Wicked Witch of the West felt in her last moments. These are yours. <laughs> Yeah, because to me, judging from how the water um, looks here, it looks like it's pouring into this section as opposed to on the, on this. But nope, it passes directly over it. Oh, we actually have to be up there, Tim. Let's go back up here. So how do we pass this? So let's try some of our spells. I actually don't have any idea how the... Oh, I think I... Uh, can we cast a levitate here maybe and get down from this side? Where is my levitate? Wow! That's interesting. Can we do that again? No. Okay. That's really weird. <laughs> I guess, okay, as a thief, you would use acrobatics to get out of here. As a fighter, I think you would gain... You could use your grappling hook. As a mage... Oh, what am I doing? We gotta be up there. Maybe. As the mage, though, we have a different way to do this. So, let's go back up there again. Actually, no, let's, let's stay here. Can we, can we calm it? A feeling of peace and tranquility fills the area. So we'll be really calm as we get burned to death by the acid. Can we destroy the altar? No. Let's summon our... You're too busy to cast... Your spells have no... Okay, so they have no effect. Let's cast our... Wand? Oh, we can't cast a wand. Okay, well then, how about freezing this stuff? The acid here won't stay frozen with fresh, hot acid blood flowing into it. Alright, let's aim at the altar. Your spells have no effect on the altar. Let's try the blood coming out of it then. 
Your spell has temporarily stopped the flow of acid here. Let us walk through the frozen acid blood. Nice. And we're safe. Hopefully. Oh, we still have blood over here, so we gotta be careful. Actually, that's still moving. Oh, well, I guess there's... Has the been a lot. frozen acid has thawed and is beginning to flow again. The acid here won't stay frozen with fresh, hot acid blood flowing into it. Alright, let's eat a fruit. You feel a surge of power as the magical energy from the fruit releases itself into your system. It should be safe to leave this chamber. All right, two of the rituals completed. Oh, this one. This one's pretty nasty. This one usually kills me at least once. Okay. This chamber. All right, so firstly, let's look around really quick. The stone, has the stone has been formed into a number of strange globes in this part of the cave. A stone image of a huge unearthly creature with tentacles has been carved out of the rock on the left side. Probably not a carving. Let's cast a tech magic. I don't think there's any magic in this area, if I recall. Your spell has no effect. Oh, wow! Okay, we don't... We can't apparently cast any... Well, at least a tech magic. Anything down here? Looks like there's a small cave here. Stone bubbles are everywhere in this section of the cave. They remind you of something, but it's not quite coming to you. Like eyes or something. Oh, that looks like a cave, but it's actually not. Okay. What is this? It's another valve or sphincter, much like the one through which you entered. Can we go through it? You can't get this valve to move at all. Okay, everyone. So this is a actual creature, and it will kill us if we do the wrong thing here. The ritual will hint as to what we have to do, I believe. You unroll the scroll containing the breath ritual. The words are visible at last, and you begin to read the ritual. Yeah, a voozle of the breath of night. I shall come to draw forth your breath in the song of shadows. On the most right horn shall I begin thy song. The shadows of darkness gather. Yeah, a voozle. Then shall I play on the leftmost of three. The wind shall come forth among the shadows. I shall bring breath again unto thy center. The wind of darkness blows all before it. Yeah, a voozle of the breath of night. I shall sound the final note on high. The shadows of darkness shall rise again. You sense an awakening and a waiting within the altar, as if it is alive and expecting something more. Okay, so do you see the tentacles on it? They're what we have to interact with. However, there's actually six tentacles here, not three. There's the three upper ones, which are pretty visible, but there's also three lower ones as well. To my recollection, the lower ones are the ones you want to start with, and then you want to end, I think, with the middle. If you use the wrong one, let's show you. Actually, I'd have to... We read the ritual. Let's save the game again. So if you use the wrong one, you are devoured. Let's, uh, let's show you. You take a deep breath, then blow hard into the hollow tentacle. <sighs> oh, that was the wrong one. Okay, it just knocked us down. They're making a bunch of noise. I thought we got eaten if we used the wrong tentacle. There you go. 
Delicious. Do you suppose that you created a vacuum inside the tentacle by blowing so hard? Or was it just hungry? Whatever the reason, explosive decompression has set in. Yep. In Insta-killed. Okay. So I guess two of them are its mouths. That one, and I think this one. So let's start with the lower right, shall we? You take a deep breath. That sounds good so far, Galvin. You take a deep... We're not being knocked down. You take... Okay, so, we get thrown back and forth endlessly, unless we can figure out a way to get out of this. Let's cast a Calm spell here. The wind seems to have stopped momentarily. You have a few seconds in which you can try to escape. No, we're, we're not. Can we... Oh, open. Go, go, go! Get out, Galvin. Don't get eaten again. Well, wow. That's, wow. That's quite a few moments, actually. But we did it. Holy crap. Yeah, so I think this is its um, esophagus. Breathing in and, obviously, breathing in and out, what have you. I think everyone gets sucked into it. I think the fighter, maybe you just pry it open? I've never done this with any character other than the mage. Okay, actually, you know what? I don't... I think we even need these spells in effect, do we? Well, it's too late. All right, let's move on. One, oh, should be running in a cave. You feel totally numb. Can't see anything, feel anything, hear anything, taste anything, or even smell anything. Is this totally senseless? However, we can guide Galvin. In real... Realistically, when you enter this chamber, there'd be nothing you could do but die. I don't, because you don't know if you're moving or not. You don't, you have no sensation of anything whatsoever. Uh, can we cast juggling lights? Of course not. Does nothing. Useless spell. Useless. Useless spell is useless. I'm surprised we can even cast a spell. Like, how do we know how to hold our our hands or anything like that? So, we, this is a maze. And we have to get to the certain parts of it. And as we begin wandering around, certain senses of ours will begin to recover. Wait. You just felt something hard and round with some spiky bits sticking out. Your sense of touch has returned. Wonderful. So we can walk around and try to avoid spikes, apparently. Guess we're going this way. I don't... Yep. Oh, hello. Going through something. Wow! Did something just die in here? Your sense of smell has just returned with a vengeance. Kinda wish it hadn't. I think we're gonna notice all sorts of different sensory organs soon, as we begin to gain them back. You hear a loud, almost explosive pounding and something like rushing water. After a moment, you realize that you're hearing the sounds of your own heartbeat and of the blood pulsing through your veins. You stand still for a second until the sounds subside to a dull throb. You can hear again. Something like that would be nightmarish. Oh, my goodness. Blinding glare assaults your vision, and you nearly fall from the path. It's as if you're staring directly at the sun. After a bit, you still see stars. Now at last you can see the cave you're in. Ahead of you lies the altar. 
These must be different synapses. We can see the nose here. We've picked up touch. So this, yeah, these must be nerves, nerve centers. Here is the eardrum that we walked past as well. And this must be an eye over there. That's a amazing artwork. Can we cast a tech magic? You sense no magic in this area. Oh, that's bull crap, but oh well. All right, so let's save the game again. Okay, and let's touch this altar. The altar feels strangely warm to your touch, but leaves a deeper chill somewhere within you. All right, well, we have the ritual. Let's go ahead and read it. You begin to read the sense ritual before the altar. Ya, Avuzel! Dark calls unto darkness. Reach out thy tentacles to feel life again. Let the sense of this world permeate thy smell. Ya, Avuzel! The sounds of our world are loud in thine ears to do with what thou will. Let the light and shadow of this world enter thy sight. Let thine own shadow of darkness cover the world without the need of light. Ya, Avuzel, dark calls unto darkness. As you complete the ritual, the scroll turns to dust in your hands. You hear a crackling noise and see flashes of lightning from the dendrites as the smell of ozone permeates the air. Okay, it's awake. Kind of. Now we need to get through this area. Do you see the Your protection spell has worn off. There's little bits of lightning which are being emitted from all these things. They will damage you as you get close to them. We do have the resistance spell, so we can give this a cast to protect us a bit. You cast the resistance to elemental forces spell. That will reduce the damage we're going to take. It's a bit tricky to get past a few of these things. If I go, oh God! Your reversal spell is wearing thin. You cast the resistance to elemental forces spell. Your reversal. Darn it! Whew, made it. Thank goodness. Reminds me of the lava challenge in the uh, similar elemental. What was it? The elemental rooms back in Quest for Glory 2 when we were in the Tome of Solomon the Bound. You cast the resistance to elemental forces spell. Taking a bit of damage, but oh god! But we made it. Okay, let's drink a healing potion. That feels good. And where to now? This is the heart ritual, so I guess it's here that we need to read the last of this. Oh, we, and we also have the essence within our mind, so we'll have to utter the last one. I guess it's, I think it's up here if I recall correctly. All right, so let's go ahead and read the heart ritual now, finally. You unroll the scroll containing the heart ritual. The words are visible at last, and you begin to perform the ritual. Ya, Avuzel, master of darkness, your servant stands now before your heart of darkness. Let your heart pulsate again with power and life. You feel a heavy throbbing sensation from your own heart, as if some force is trying to rip it free from your chest. Ya, Avuzel, let the heart of darkness force the black blood through your veins. The pressure on your chest relaxes as the stone heart begins to pulse and throb, with unearthly energy. Ya, Avuzel, master of darkness. As you complete the ritual, the scroll turns to dust in your hands. 
The rumbling noise grows louder as a passage opening appears in the ceiling above the heart altar. Okay, let's head on up there then. I think this is it, everybody. I think the end of music might be a little loud as well, so I'm going to stop here really quick. Well, I'm not going to stop recording. I just want to take a moment and thank you all for watching. I hope you really enjoyed this series, and I apologize for finishing it up, the last bits here, so, so late. I meant to finish this in October, and I got distracted by other games instead. This was one of my favorite series went back when I was a teenager or so. Yeah, back in 1994. Yeah, still a teenager back then. Oh my goodness, it's been so long. In any case, I hope you guys liked it very much. I really enjoyed the Quest for Glory series. And I'll be playing number five when it gets closer to the summer, I think. Probably around May is when I'll start that one. Anyway, let's get up there and do the last ritual. Very good. You have succeeded where many have failed. Begin the final ritual. Soon the darkness will return to this land, and I will never lie helpless in my coffin again. Summon Avuzel and free the shadows of darkness. Enough talk. Let's get this over with. I do believe you are jealous. Is that because this hero stopped you from summoning Iblis so long ago? You resent the fact that I triumph while you fail, don't you? I only wish to begin your moment of triumph, my dear Dark Master. Very well. Let the final ritual begin. You begin to recite the final ritual. Ya, yeah, Avuzel, we summon thee. Cold chill fills you, and you feel as if your blood was being sucked from your veins. Still you continue. Oh, great Dark One, enter the world of light! You feel as if your feet were slowly and painfully dissolving into the floor as if by acid. Somehow you continue the essence ritual. Oh, shadows of darkness, enter the land of the living! Your arms feel as if they were frozen, locked forever holding this paper. You continue to speak because you have no other choice. Oh, master of the forever night, return to your own body and live again. Your head aches and it's getting incredibly difficult to concentrate. You can barely intone the last words of the ritual. Ya, Ya, Avuzel, we summon thee. Yes! <laughs> yes! The spell is completed and Avuzel awakens. Darkness will fill the land and we will never flee the sunshine again. No! How dare you! Uh-oh. Ah, you have just shattered the bonds which bound me. Now we shall see who is the true Dark Master. Your resistance spell is expired. I am still a far greater master of magic than you. I am a far more powerful vampire than you. Do you really think your spells can harm me? <laughs> Guess again. But my dear Katrina, I do not need to cast spells at you to destroy you. I intend only to destroy my enemy, the one you seem so fond of. Care to watch him die? No! I will not let him die! The fool! I knew that Avuzel would be attracted by that spell. Now Katrina will have all the darkness she so desired. And much, much more. Ah, the first part of my vengeance is complete. Now I can enjoy fully watching you die slowly and painfully. 
The tendrils you clutch so desperately are starting to slip through your numb fingers. You cannot hold on much longer. Still, there is a fire burning inside you as you realize that Katrina truly cared for you. You know that you must stop Adavis once more and forever, and prevent the Dark One from fully entering this world. There's no place you can run to, and no place for you to hide. Soon there won't even be a place to stand upon. Getting worried, great hero. I'm going to quickly save the game here, under a different spot, just in case. Now, what are our options here? We know that our spells are not have been too successful against Adivis, and we tried casting them at him before. He's a vampire as well, so he's going to be tougher to kill. We need to drive a stake through his heart. Um, emergency. However, remember that we gained the last laugh from Keep On... No, not from Keep On Laughing, from Punny Bones. I think this is the time to use it. Tell ultimate joke. You tell the ultimate joke about the wizard and the farmer's daughter. <laughs> That's a killer. You think to delay your demise by telling stupid jokes? That wasn't even funny. Despite his protestations, Adavis begins to laugh. In a few moments, he's doubled over, still laughing uncontrollably. Now's your chance! I think we can summon our staff and cast a Force Bolt at him, which will summon a Voozle. Oh god, we have a fire! <laughs> Alright, ignore it. Let's... So now to end this, remember the dream. We can even hear the music playing as to the hint is what we're supposed to do. Let's resummon the staff again. You're too busy. Oh, can we... We can't... Okay, where's the staff? Uh-oh. Game might... Get, get, game, might... game might be bugged, everybody. You're too busy. I can't... Okay. It's just out of reach. Yes. We're supposed to have the staff in our inventory, and I don't see it here, so uh, give me a few seconds. You have freed me from my imprisonment by the Dark One. I have driven Avuzel back to its own dimension forever. Your magic is of great power to have overcome the evil which was in this place. It seems we shared a dream once. You gave me hope while I was trapped in the darkness. You held me in your arms and showed me your love. I cannot hold you now, nor can we kiss. I am only a spirit, a ghost. It will take more magic than I have ever known before we shall ever be together again. I can only thank you for everything you have done. I shall love you forever. Farewell. Two weeks pass from the final encounter in the Dark One's cave. Your friends and acquaintances in Moldavia hold a party in your honor at Castle Borgov. So even as we speak, the swamp is drying up. Soon the pass will open and we may trade with the outside world. Nafta, nafta, because we have to. We can finally sell our produce to others. Yeah, we'll export garlic to all parts of the world. Everybody will be stinky. We can even import an elephant or two, just for old time's sake. The king has sent word that I shall be the newly appointed boyar. Castle Borgov will again protect and guard Mordavia. He could not have chosen a worthier person for the role. <laughs> and I mean that sincerely. We have gathered here to thank this hero. He has driven away the shadows of darkness from this land. <laughs>
Mordavia will again be the peaceful, beautiful land of our forefathers. The people fill the room with their cheers. He returned Tanya to us. For that, we shall be forever grateful. He proved that dreams can be real, if you work to make them so. He brought me back to my mommy and daddy, and you know what? They weren't even mad at me. Everyone again gives a cheer of happiness. Igor be in grave if not for hero friend. Instead of redhead, Igor be deadhead. <laughs> Little graveyard humor there. I would have been burned at a stake only because I am a gypsy if this hero had not befriended me. That's because some people whose names we won't mention, but you know who you are, spread nasty rumors that gypsies were werewolves. <laughs> How foolish to believe such things. There are many here who owe their lives and happiness to this hero. In a land with a history of great heroes like Pyotr and Irana, he is one of the greatest. Again, the hall is filled with cheers of excitement. You suddenly hear a familiar pair of voices. There, that's it. I, I believe this crystal ball is finally working. Do you see anything, Fenris? Yeah, I see him. He's with a bunch of people. It's either a reward ceremony or a lynch mob. What? L let me see. Well, it's a reward ceremony, of course. He's probably done some great deed, as usual. So now what? Well, seeing that his adventure in Mordavia is obviously over, we bring him here to Silmaria, of course. Suppose he doesn't want to come here. Ah, you forget. He is a hero. Silmaria needs a hero right now. And everyone knows a hero has to go where a hero has to go. Let's hope he knows that. Just make sure you use the right spell to teleport him. The last time you tried this, you brought the clothes and left the person behind. This time, for sure. <laughs> this time, for sure. In a voice totally different. What was with Arana? She loves us? Like, we... Okay, we, ha we had a dream. I, I guess? I guess we gave her hope, but she thought about us endlessly when, uh, when we were trying to... Uh, rid of Oozle. That's a bit awkward. That's a bit awkward. It's also That also wasn't as bad as I remember it being. I, I thought it was like two sentences she said. It's something about not being able to keep the projection uh, of, of herself around, and then it was over. I was like, that was really weird. Okay, well, we did it! And it's a heads up, everybody. If you, if you become a, if you're a mage, and you reach that spot, the bug, which, like, we can't summon the staff, it's a pretty well-known bug. Um, the, the fix for it is not quite as well-known. To summon the staff a second time after you defeated out of this or out of these, set oh God before you even enter that room, you have to set the detail all the way down to nothing, and set the speed all the way up to max. That's the only way in which you'll be able to do it, or at least that's that was the case for me. If that doesn't work, try setting your uh, your difficulty down to nothing as well. All right, so we did it. Congratulations, Galvin, and thank you all for watching again. This looks like, or thank you again for watching, everybody. We've got our stats. We're going to export our character, and I'll see you again probably up in May, May or June, when we'll play the last game together. And that's that does it for the series. Thank you, everyone, one more time, and I'll see you later. Take care, everyone.